Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is my first video and I thought I would start it off by doing a little eyeshadow comparison video. I was strolling through Walgreens the other day and I came across this palette from Wet n Wild. It's called Rose in the Air and I noticed how similar it looks to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. Here is like a little comparison. I wouldn't say it's an exact dupe, but the shades are super similar. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to do like a little comparison. So I'm gonna do one eye with Wet n Wild, one eye with the Anastasia and see how they compare. Well, this is probably one of my all time favorite palettes. Like if I'm gonna travel anywhere, this is always the one that I take. Um, it's just a good neutral palette, but also has some like more interesting fun colors like the pinks and the really warm tones and stuff like that. And the shimmers in this palette, I think they're my all time favorite shimmer formula ever. So. This is definitely like an all-time favorite palette for me and I think a lot of other people. So I thought it'd be interesting to compare this palette with it. Um, I think this was $4.99. So this is $5 versus I believe this is $42. I'm going to do one eye Wet n Wild, one eye Anastasia. And um, I think I'm also going to put some swatches in here. I don't really love swatches too much because I think something can swatch really great and then you put it on your eye and it's not actually that great and vice versa, but I thought I would do some swatch comparisons of some of the shades that are kind of similar between the two palettes so you can see the difference in swatches. So in the Wet n Wild palette, there's 10 shades and then in the Anastasia palette, there's 14 shades. So there's four more shades in here, but I would say that in the Wet n Wild one, it definitely put in the more, um, I would say the more used colors that you would use in this palette, but um, let's just get into the swatches and see some comparisons. Okay, so I swatched these possibly the most difficult way possible, but we'll get better. This is the first time. But first right here, um, I did the Anastasia one first and then the Wet n Wild one second. So this one is Love Letter from Anastasia and this is the Wet n Wild color. The Wet n Wild uh, palette doesn't have like individual colors shade names for each color, so that's kind of a bummer. So that's a love letter, that's Wet n Wild. This one's Railger from Anastasia, and that one's Wet n Wild. This one's Bon Fresco, I think's how you say it, from Anastasia. That one's Wet n Wild. This one's Antique Bronze from Anastasia, and that one's Wet n Wild. And then the last one, this one is Red Ochre from Anastasia and that one's the Wet n Wild. So I'd say from looking at the swatches and just swatching them with my finger, I just did one swipe down for each swatch on each color. Um, the Anastasia ones are definitely more powdery and seem more soft and pigmented than the Wet n Wild ones do. The Wet n Wild ones still seem pigmented. As you can see on my arm, they're pigmented. They're not like, I mean, they don't seem any more patchy than the Anastasia ones, but they're definitely a different formula. First, I'm just gonna start by um, prepping both of my eyes with the Tarte Shape Tape. This is in the color light, and if I don't use actual eye primer, I usually just use this concealer to prime my eyes just because it dries down more dry, like it's a not very uh, dewy concealer, so I find it primes my eyes well. And then to set that, I just like to do, um, like put over a, any translucent powder, just like a super thin layer of it, that way it doesn't get all cakey or make it so your eyeshadows won't stick, just sets it a little bit. Okay, and I think I'm gonna do the Wet n Wild on this eye and then the Anastasia on this eye. And I'm gonna start by putting a transition color. Um, this is one of my favorite colors. Well, I guess it would be this color right here. This is one of my favorite colors from the Anastasia palette. So I think I'm gonna use um, Bon Fresco from the Anastasia palette and then this shade from the Wet n Wild as a transition shade in my crease. And I'm gonna be using a Makeup Shock T4. It's a big, just a uh, big fluffy brush and in between each color so that it doesn't get like muddied in between the two and the formulas kind of stay a little bit separate. I'm gonna be wiping it off on, it's pretty much a Veramona color switch. Let me just show you. Uh, this is not the Veramona color switch. It's like one of those little hair donuts that you put in your hair to make like a bun but it's the same material as a Veramona color switch, so I use this just to clean off my brush if I need to change colors. It's like $4 instead of $20 for that Veramona one, so 
I'm gonna be using that Juan Fresco color and just putting it in my crease. I'm gonna drag it a little bit on my outer corner too. This is just like always my very first step if I don't know what I'm doing with an eye look. And then I'm gonna wipe off my brush from the Wet n Wild side and I'm gonna go in with Juan Fresco right here. Definitely already just dipping into that pan. I have I can dip into the Wet n Wild one a couple times and there's no fallout or anything or kickback. Um, and with the Anastasia one, I dip in once and there is a lot of kickback. Um, like I said earlier, the Anastasia Modern Renaissance palette is one of my all time favorite palettes. It's always one that I take traveling with me, so I don't mind the kickback as long as it blends, which it usually does. So I've only dipped into the Anastasia palette once, and I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this eye is definitely more pigmented than this eye. I think total I went in like twice with the color on this um, eye, so the Anastasia is definitely more pigmented. I'm gonna go in again with the Wet n Wild side just to build it up the same color as the Anastasia side. The Wet n Wild side is blending out like super easily though. And also about this uh, Wet n Wild palette, I'm pretty sure that they reformulated these eyeshadows. They came out with a whole bunch of different little palettes like this and some of them were like recreations, I guess, of other palettes that they have had out and they discontinued those and re-released them and reformulated. So um, it will be interesting to see if they're actually better quality. Wet n Wild used to have like my favorite drugstore eyeshadow formula ever, like way back in the day, probably, I'd say it's probably over five years ago now. And then they came out with, let me see if I have some. Okay, these are the OG Wet n Wild palettes. Does anyone remember these? Like I still have all of these because these were the best formula ever and then they discontinued them and they came out with different ones which I don't even have any of those because I ended up not liking them as much as these. All right, and next I'm gonna go into what would be the shade Love Letter in the Modern Renaissance palette, which is this color in the Wet n Wild. And I'm just gonna put this to deepen up my crease a little bit um, and lower than the first shade that we did. And I'm using a Makeup Shack T73. It's just a little bit more precise, dense blending brush. Ooh, okay, this is pigmented. I wasn't expecting that, but it seems to be blending out nicely, so that's all that matters. Now I'm just taking this right throughout my crease and blending it into the outer corner. So all of that was just from one dip in the pan, so this one, this color in the Wet n Wild one is pretty pigmented. All right, and cleaning off this brush and going in with the Love Letter shade. When I swatched these on my arm, it seemed that the Anastasia color was a little bit deeper and maybe a little bit more purple than the Wet n Wild one. The Wet n Wild seemed just a little bit more pink than purple, um, but they're looking pretty similar on my eye. I don't know if you guys can see on the camera, but this eye has way less lit space compared to this one, so it's hard for me to get like an even blend on each side. Well, it might look a little bit different, but you know, we just gotta work with what we got. <laughs> to be fair, this is my favorite eye, so if I end up liking this side more, it might just be because I like this eyeball more. <laughs> so I'm gonna go in with this Morphe M514 brush. I'm gonna mix um, this more red and this orange shade, which would be Red Ochre and Rilger in the Anastasia palette. These ones definitely seem to be a little bit more powdery in the Wet n Wild one. I don't know if you can see. Um, there's a little bit more kick up in this one compared to the other ones. I don't know if it's just because this brush is a little bit more pokey, um, but just something to note. I'm just bringing that a little bit further onto my lid and then into the crease still. All right, cleaning off that brush. I'm gonna be going into Realgur and Red Ochre. These also have a ton of kickback. I think it might just be this brush. This is kind of a pokey brush, so that might have something to do with it. These shadows are blending into the Love Letter color really easily also, but again, it might just be because it's this eyeball and I like this eyelid so much better than this one, but kind of feel like the other eyes blending easier. Looking at the colors side by side, I think the colors are pretty comparable between the two sides. So um, I'd 
say they're pretty close dupes once they're actually applied to your eyes. All right, and next I'm gonna go in with this deep brown color with the Makeup Shack T14. It's just like a tiny little detail blending brush. And I'm gonna put that closer to my lash line and the very outer edge. And if you can see that right there, I do have some fallout. This is the first color that's had any fallout at all. I'd have to say this is probably the most disappointing color that I've used so far. It doesn't seem to be really deepening the other colors in my outer corner. Um, but let me wipe off this brush here and go in with Cypress Umber, which is the comparable one in the Anastasia palette. Honestly, this is pretty comparable to the Wet n Wild one. They're both not really deepening um, these colors very much. I usually like to go in with a black. Like I almost always go in a bl with a black. I just think it deepens the outer corner like the best. But the difference between the two shadows, I applied them the same exact way with the same exact brush. And the Wet n Wild one, I don't know if you can tell, it does have quite a bit of fallout down here. And the Anastasia one, it only has like a couple of dots, like barely at all. And then just because I want to use as many colors as possible, I'm going to go in with this shade right here and I'm going to just put that kind of in my outer corner, my outer lid area. I'm going to use this little brush here. This is the Makeup Shack T58. This is one of my favorite brushes by them. This has definitely helped deepening it a little bit, um, although you can't see the shimmer in it. This is a shimmery shade too much. And the comparable shade in the Anastasia palette is Antique Bronze, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I definitely think the Anastasia color has a little bit more sheen. Okay, and this is what I was most interested in because like I said earlier, the Modern Renaissance um, shimmers are some of my all-time favorite shimmer formula. Like, you definitely don't need any Fix Plus. You can apply it with a brush. It's just, they're so easy to work with. So I'm interested to see how this shimmer shade works here. Um, this is kind of a more golden shimmery shade and even on my finger it doesn't look as reflective as the Anastasia one does. I am going to wet it with Fix Plus though even though I usually wouldn't do that with the Anastasia shadows because usually I would cut out my crease and it would be on top of like a concealer base but I'm not going to do that today so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and put some Fix Plus on it. So I'm going to dip my brush in. This is a Zoeva. 234 brush and I'm just gonna pack this on my lid. Ooh, okay, it's got some shimmer. And then the comparable shade in the Anastasia palette is Primavera, which is this color right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna dip in and then spritz it with Fix Plus. And we'll see if it's more reflective. This shade definitely seems brighter. I would say that they applied both really nicely with the Fix Plus. I know that the Anastasia one applies great without it. I just feel like this one definitely isn't as buttery of a formula as the Anastasia one as far as the shimmer shades. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pop on some mascara and lashes. I'm gonna use the House of Lashes. This is Demure Light. Okay, so this is pretty much the finished look and I thought we'd go over my final thoughts between these two palettes. Um, overall, I definitely think the mattes are very comparable even though the Anastasia shades are seem a little bit more powdery and definitely more pigmented than these ones are. But even though they are more pigmented, I think that they apply very similarly on the eyes. Um, the nice thing about the Wet n Wild mattes, I would say, is that they're a little bit easier to work with because they're not as pigmented. So I'd say if you're a beginner or not as comfortable blending eyeshadows, um, this is definitely a good one to pick up because you can kindly, kind of slowly build the pigment rather than you know, going in with so much pigment at once. But as for the shimmers, which in this palette, the only two shimmers are this one and this one, which we used both of them in the look that I did today. Compared to the Anastasia one, I would say the Anastasia ones are much better. They're definitely more reflective um, and shimmery. These ones are just kind of like, I don't know what I would call them because they're definitely shimmers. They're not like satins, but just not as in your face. And even with Fix Plus, like 
it just doesn't brighten them as much as the Anastasia ones do. But with that being said, this palette is only $5. This is a super easy to travel with compact. It's super thin, easy to carry. And I think that all, since most of them are mattes, I think it's a super good palette to bring with you with travel. But I think this is probably gonna turn into my new traveling palette just because it is smaller and it has all the colors that I really need. So I would say if you don't have the Modern Renaissance palette already, this is definitely a good option to pick up. It's super affor affordable and the quality is really good. Even if you do have the Modern Renaissance palette and you just like to collect makeup and have backups, I think this is also a really good palette to have. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is, I guess, technically the second video that I filmed, but the first one that I filmed will not be going up. I had like a meltdown and it was, it just was not a smooth experience. And I don't feel like this experience was like super smooth either, but it definitely went better than the first time that I tried. And if you have any constructive criticism for me, things that you would like me to add in future videos, future videos that you would like to see, please tell me down in the comments. I'm, this is totally like a learning process and I hope that one day I can have like a fun time doing this instead of it just being stressful and me feeling like I don't know what the heck I'm doing. If you wanna follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. My name everywhere is TessFX, so you can just search me by that and it's all the same everywhere. I know this was like a super simple look compared to maybe some of the stuff that you might see on my Instagram page and I hope that was okay, but this is kind of the go-to look that I use when I'm using the Modern Renaissance palette, so I thought that's kind of something that I would go with. If you wanna see more of my creative looks or bold looks on my YouTube channel and wanna see tutorials, I will do those for you. I just thought that since I saw these two palettes, like this would be kind of a cool video. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and it wasn't too boring and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.